Archbishop Amon, so many alumni, so many friends and family, thank you for being here. Uh, I had the pleasure of knowing Dennis Lausha, this year's uh, Alumnus of the Year recipient for quite some time now. We first had a chance to chat uh, at an eighth grade football game he attended to watch his son play. He seemed just as invested in that game as any Saints game, and uh, I'm assuming it's in part because his son was on the team, but also I'm assuming it's because he loves his alma mater. One of the things I love about Dennis is that he has a similar love for the city of New Orleans. Uh, we are all proud of, uh, of our young ones, all proud of the Saints. We love bragging about the rich culture of our city, but Dennis loves all these things with the passion of someone charged with looking out for them. His love for his children and his wife Jennifer is evident as his love for the church in New Orleans and Loyola University as well. His successes in life aren't just achievement plaques that he can nail to the wall. If Dennis cares about something, he will bring the full force of his talent to bear on whatever it is that he wants to see succeed. It is uh, the manifestation of a heart filled with charity and talent. In my short time as president of Jesuit, I've had the chance to recognize only a few men for the F. Edward A. Bear Alumnus of the Year Award. I understand this award best when I look at the previous recipients. Men we hope our current Blue Jays turn out to be like. Talented men who put that talent at the service of God and the service of those people God has put in their lives. Dennis Lausha stands out as one of these men. Dennis Lausha currently serves as a member of the Business Council of New Orleans and the River Region, in the River Region, as a board member of the Audubon Nature Institute and Loyola University, and as a trustee of the National World War II Museum. He's completed terms as board president of the Preservation Resource Center and the regional chapter of the Boy Scouts of America, and he has served as a member of the Blight Transition New Orleans Task Force, the Mayor's Transition Committee, the Stewart Hall School Board of Trustees, and the New Orleans Museum of Art Board. In 2010, he was named the Alumnus of the Year by Loyola's College of Business. He also received the 2014 Distinguished American Award from the Allstate Sugar Bowl chapter of the National Football Foundation College Football Hall of Fame. In 2016, he was inducted into the Order of the West Range for the Chi Pi Kappa Alpha Foundation, and he was honored as a 2019 Laureate of Junior Achievement Greater New Orleans Chapter. And now I'm incredibly, pr incredibly proud to recognize Dennis Lausha as Jesuit High School's 65th recipient of the F. Edward A. Bear Award. Wow, can't wait to hang that one on the wall. Uh, thank you, Father Brown, and uh, all that selected uh, me to be alumnus of the year. Um, until Greg Benzel, who's here in the crowd, mentioned it, I didn't realize that you got a free pass to heaven with this. Um, <laughs> I'm good. He wants to know if it's transferable. So, uh, <laughs> um, when Father Brown asked me to receive this honor, I immediately thought of all the people that made this possible uh, by their love and truly unwavering support. Um, to all of my teachers, administrators, coaches, and the staff of Jesuit High School, I say thank you. Uh, to the Jesuit Order, the men and women of the cloth, um, of all Catholic orders who sacrifice and devote themselves uh, to God and the development of others, I say thank you. Uh, to the thousands of alumni who through the years have supported this institution to make it one of the greatest high schools in the country, I say thank you, particularly to the alumni here tonight. Uh, to my classmates and friends, many of them here, um, who have had a profound impact, they have all had a profound impact on, ho on who I am. Uh, their achievements and their endeavors have truly inspired me uh, when here at Jesuit and then today as an adult. I am constantly <laughs> amazed at the men that these teen teenage boys became both professionally and more importantly, as husbands, fathers, and community givers. In my line of work, there are a lot of heroes. I'll promise you this. I stand here to tell you, these are my heroes. To my colleagues and friends that are here today, many 
Saints and um, Pelicans and, and uh, Benson Capital Partner and many other colleagues that are here today, I say thank you. Um, I'm here because of you. Um, I particularly, speaking of um, all of my professional associations, I particularly must recognize the man that had the greatest impact on my professional life, and that was Tom Benson. Um, admittedly, he was a Brother Martin man. <laughs> but, but, he was educated at Loyola. He's a Jesuit guy. He gave a 28-year accountant the opportunity of a lifetime. He asked me to be treasurer of the New Orleans Saints. He asked me to be treasurer of my passion. Um, I took so much pride today and then when people said we were alike. We both went to Loyola. We both were accountants. We both had a passion for business and finance. We both had this unbelievable desire to, to push, compete, and win. And we believe very strongly in our faith in God. I miss Tom Benson. There is not a day that I don't think of him and his legacy. For 20 years, I sat out of the man who served on the bridge of a battleship, who built a national car dealership chain, who revolutionized many of the concepts of car sales and finance, fin finance. A man who owned not one bank, but many banks. A man who owned real estate and farms. A man that owned a, not only owned a television station, but made that television station number one. A man, obviously, who saved, served, saved the Saints and the Pelicans. A man that won Emmys, ran the Kentucky Derby, and Preakness, and brought a Super Bowl championship to New Orleans. As a Jesuit man, I give him my greatest compliment. He truly was a man for others. He will ever be known as a person who gave millions and millions of dollars back to our community, including the unprecedented and gracious $5 million gift that he and Ms. Benson gave to Jesuit High School. He built a legacy that thrives today, and it thrives today because of Mrs. Gail Benson, and who is here today. I thank her for all of her support to me and my family and the people of our organizations. I have a front seat to see her passion and the love she has for everyone in this community. I cannot express the depth of devotion she has to God, her faith, her community, and our organizations. As Mr. Benson, she too shares a love of, spirit, of business and the spirit of entrepreneurship. There is no better owner in the NFL and NBA, and I've seen a lot, and I've been around for a long time. There is no better owner in the NBA or the NFL. Again, as a Jesuit man, I give her my greatest compliment. She is a woman for others. I know that Tom Benson would be very proud of her, and again, I thank her for her unwavering support of me and my family. This is a... <laughs> this is a very special day for me. Sadly, I have only one regret, and that regret is my parents, Dennis and Diane Lasha, and my grandmother, Florence Simon, are not here to share it with me. I'm here because of their love and support. My sister Shelly and I could not have had a more loving and supportive childhood. Parents and a grandparent devoted to raising their children regardless of the sacrifice, and there were a lot of sacrifices. They were the true embodiment of wanting their children to be better than they were in life and faith. They were the true embodiment of people for others also. I pray that all children in this community and across the country can have parental devotion that we had growing up. Lastly, I want to thank my most important, the most important. I want to I thank God every day for my wife, Jennifer, and my two children, Patrick and Evie. On my first day of work at Arthur Anderson, I asked a senior partner on advice for a long and prosperous career. He mentioned that there would be peaks and valleys. Never get too high, never get too low. That advice was so prophetic considering I would someday work for a professional sports team. I am here today without having Jennifer, I'm here today without having Jennifer by my side, with Jennifer being by my side, softening the downsides and assisting on the upsides. No one, no one is more dedicated and sacrificed more for me than her. I also like to share that nothing brings me greater joy than sharing the peaks with her. 
the two greatest decisions I ever made in my life was to accept an invitation to a blind date with her and asking her to marry me. I sincerely hope that I have said I love you as many times as I, as I have said, please help or I need a favor. We often talk about dedication, passion, sacrifice, hard work, and sports. I promise you that those attributes are rarely recognized but about the spouses, and there are many spouses here who have professional, um, who are really professional uh, athletes as well in their own right. Those are the ones who sacrifice the, the most, the wives of the partners of those who are in our profession. So thank all of you. To my children, you've you have brought your mother and me the greatest joy of our lives. To be alumnus of this school is awesome. To be the parent of an alum is even greater. Patrick, a 22 graduate, gave me one of the best experiences a father and alum can have, seeing the Jesuit experience through a father's eyes. It not only reconfirmed everything I thought about this institution, but it strengthened it. And one of my greatest joys is now seeing my daughter grow. My daughter's unwavering and uncompromising love for her father is truly one of, the, one of God's greatest gifts. Evie's optimism, happiness, truly inspires me to be a better person. Her enthusiasm for life, learning, and fun is energizing. Archbishop Amen, a few months back, you may remember, you had a sermon, and as, as with many, there were words that uh, resonate with me, and some still do today. One of... Uh, one of the messages you had was, what if, can only to, if, what if we can only have tomorrow will we thank God for today? Well, God, I sincerely thank you for everyone, everyone I mentioned, and all those who have touched my life in any other way. Life has given me a tremendous journey, and I pray every day that our journey continues with good health, prosperity, and everlasting life. A little bit more. Hang in there. There are six principles of a Jesuit education. AMDG, which we all know, man for others, respect each person as God's creation, develop the whole person, formation, not just education, and majus, majus, more, strive for excellence. As a freshman, I didn't know these were the goals of the education at Jesuit, and I certainly was unaware of the principles when I applied. I do think, however, that one principle that I saw and certainly my parents saw, was more, striving for excellence. Late one evening at a meeting of prospective students in the West Bank, Father McGinn, dressed in his priest attire and jacket, introduced Jesuit to the audience. His look, his demeanor, was discipline and professionalism. His mes message was unapologetic, Jesuit is excellence. Mediocracy was for other institutions, not here at Jesuit. You will be challenged, and frankly, some will make it and Others will not. Subsequently, a handful of remarks afterward were unwelcome or even, or even thought of arrogance. I, however, saw it as an unbelievable challenge. Everything about more and excellence drew me towards it. When the open house occurred, I saw a magnificent building heralding achievement and accomplishment. I saw excellent person personified in its students and teachers. I knew then that I had to be a part of this institution. All summer leading up to my entrance exam, I studied at least an hour a day to prepare for the test. Many of my friends asked why. It was difficult and awkward to explain, but I desperately wanted more. I wanted to be excellent. It brought me and my family great joy when I received my acceptance letter. I recall it being a rainy day and my father chasing down the mailman to get our mail earlier than the rest of the neighborhood. I recall opening the letter and reading Dear Blue Jay. Unquestionably, that was the greatest and proudest moment of my young life. I was so happy that I made my parents proud. I was so happy that I made folks at my grammar school, the teachers who supported me at visitation of Our Lady. So now I was a Blue Jay, but I, did I truly know what it meant? I wanted more and I wanted to be excellent, and boy did I get more. More homework, more studying, more discipline, <laughs> more commitment to academics and sports, more responsibilities, more relationships, and as I spoke to someone earlier, a lot more traffic growing up on the West Bank. I remember nights getting home after basketball games or practice after 10 o'clock, studying until 2, and getting up at 5.45 to 
helped you make it to school on time. Not much different than a lot of folks that are, that are in, in, the, in this building tonight. And if you didn't make it to school on time because of bridge traffic, PH. <laughs> Unapologetic excellence, PH. I didn't completely understand it then, but it made me who I am today. Dedication, passion, hard work, all these things I strive for today were introduced, incubated, and reinforced in my days at Jesuit. These are the same principles and foundations of a championship football team and basketball team. I swear to you, there's not a day that goes by where I don't think about how me and our organization can strive for excellence, for more, and to be better. Father Thompson would remind us, however, that God gave us these talents and gifts and they should never be wasted or exploited. It is your responsibility and obligation to sharpen and push for excellence, but it is even more important that those talents are used for others. Again, words and lessons of youth for what profound knowledge is a future leader. This combination of excellence with love God with your whole heart and soul and love thy neighbor as thyself is very powerful. In fact, it's so powerful in that statement lie the very seeds of, of success in business. Good product, good value, and good corporate citizen. I strive to have these principles at my core, and they are the very foundation of my success. I proudly graduated from Jesuit with honors in varsity, and varsity letterman in basketball. My experience and friendships at Jesuit were outstanding, but perhaps the greatest gift of Jesuit was an awareness that there was so much more, so much more education, so many more goals to achieve, so many more relationships to establish, so many more people to help, so much more I could do, I could do to build my faith. This thirst for more as an, as an applicant grew even more as a graduate. But now the thirst was accomplished with something else. The, the thirst was, aco was accompanied, rather, by something else. It was accompanied by confidence. Confidence to move forward, confidence to be a leader, confidence to fail knowing that I would get up and I would be better. This fulfilling, this fulfilled and exceeded any thought that any promise at Jesuit was made to me. Sadly today, missing in our community, country, world, in our social media, are words and phrases of excellence, people for others, formation, respect, development of the whole person, and glory to God. Negative, negativism, divisiveness, and pessimism seem to prevail. For me, for you, for all of us that came before us and all that have been touched by this institution, I think we have an obligation to change that narrative. This institution is an institution of optimism and can do. I saw the same principles and optimism 35 years ago that I saw recently with my graduating son, which is a tribute to Father Brown and the faculty and staff of this institution. We have been blessed with these tools, and we must put these tools for work. to work. This is our calling. This is our opportunity to make a positive change. Looking over the last 175 years of this city, there have been enormous challenges. Challenges greater than any we face today, but there is always a constant. There has always been, a Jes there has always been Jesuit men leading, standing, standing strong, and being men for others, challenging us for better challenging us to be better, to want more, to be excellent. At our core, that is who we are. We are Jesuit Blue Jays. Thank you very much.